Hello, welcome back to Math Time with Professor Prime, and I am your host as always, Professor Prime. And welcome to my super ultra mega math history, phenomenal figures. And today, we're talking about one of the most prolific mathematicians in math history, Leonard Euler. So we got we got a couple things to discuss to say the least. And I guess I mean honestly I could probably just say, well, yep, he contributed a lot to math, just about everything. <laughs> and then kind of leave it at that. But that wouldn't be any fun, how would it? Um that being said, let's get into it. So Euler was a Swiss mathematician who was born in the 1700s and led a pretty lengthy life. Um he was the son of a pastor and another pastor's daughter. And so as a result, that definitely impacted him. And he was actually pretty religious, which is not something that people usually would associate with a mathematician, which I find interesting. Like, um, but yeah, so that was a, a pretty common then, I'd say, and fairly common now. <laughs> but that being said, uh, his father had actually planned for him to be a pastor as well. But here's where it gets interesting. Now, his father was a friend of the Bernoullis. And I might do something on their family. Honestly, each of them could have their own video, but I'll probably do that as a collection. Uh, just talk about all of them. Because they, they had a lot of mathematicians in that family. But anyway, Euler's father um, was friends with that family. And as a result... Uh, you know, that family became close with his family. And uh, one of the Bernoullis took Euler under his wing and um, understood his skills in math from an early age and wanted to foster that. And did talk to his father about letting him pursue math as opposed to, um, you know, being a pastor. Now, the interesting thing about Euler, in addition to the math, is like he, he did a little bit of everything, but always with a mathematical aspect to it because you know he was a straight up mathematician but he was also a physicist he was also a logician an astronomer a, you know like a geographer sorry geographer <laughs> um and he also did some things with like music theory as well so all of that has a lot of math in it and i think that's pretty cool and when you know he's getting started after you know he got his degrees um he did take a post uh, and a medical department before eventually getting into math. And there's a lot that happened in this dude's life. You know, he's a professor at different places. Um, and I think that's cool. And he, uh, what, produced about 400 articles over the course of 25 years um, regarding to, like, a lot of math. And, you know, he did a lot more uh, than just... The, you know, produce math, but the stuff that he produced was game changing. Um, and he pretty much impacted every area, you know, like algebra, trig, calc, um, uh, but also like analysis in a very big way. Uh, it doesn't, it don't, it doesn't get talked about much. Uh, calculus variations, uh, you know, and as a result of the calc part uh, from before, you know, differential equations, all that good stuff. Um, he is also responsible for some modern notation that we um, have and also popularizing some other notation. So the modern notations for trig that we have, he's responsible for that, um, as well as popularizing the use of what we, uh, sorry, the use of the pi symbol that we have these days. Um, he's responsible for introducing functions and function notation, you know, like the whole f of x sort of deal. And I can't talk about this particular part of the video without talking about what he's like most known for in terms of like, uh, you know, symbols or notation. Uh, he's responsible for introducing E, aka Euler's number. And that's pretty big. Also kind of funny because, you know, it's like, it's a letter that, um, is a number. And I think that's cool because it kind of touches on some of uh, the things that I enjoy, which is like math is all about representation. It's like, so what? E is a letter. We know what it represents numerically, and that's okay. 
Because I know people who aren't crazy about like um, algebra because you know you just start throwing letters in, but the truth is those letters represent something. They have context. They have meaning. And I think that's pretty cool. But anyway, he's known for that. Um, also, like some nation notation, and I can go on and on. There's actually like an Euler's constant too, and that that doesn't get talked about much. But uh, that being said, yeah, one of the things that I mentioned was analysis, and he contributed a lot to that. Now, by modern standards, uh, some people wouldn't consider him to have proven things rigorously enough. But you could argue that those modern standards wouldn't exist if not for a lot of things that he did. Now, on another note, he, he again, like, lived an interesting life. Um, when he was in Berlin for a while, like, he eventually got on the bad side of uh, Peter II, who did not like him and thought that he didn't know much outside of math, which I don't think is entirely true, but it's been on record that, like, sometimes he would talk about things that, you know, he didn't always know about, and he was often the subject of uh, ridicule from Voltaire, which I, you know, I didn't really know back when I originally learned about Euler. Um, so, you know, it's, I think it's just interesting because someone who is so prolific could still be made fun of for certain things, like if he didn't know. And I think it's kind of weirdly cool in a way because it's like, okay, we could be experts of this and that, but we don't know everything. Um, not the, that ridicule part was fun, but the part where it's like, yeah, even someone like that can still experience some hardship from people. I think that's an interesting thing because we all got that, you know? We all have different experiences that shape us in different things that we know. Um, and sometimes people are cruel, no matter who you are. So, um, but I do think that it's worth noting that yes, people will remember Voltaire, but they probably remembered Euler a bit better. Just saying. Um, but yeah, so he also, you know, got into a lot of philosophical arguments, um, notably a lot of religious ones, because like I said earlier, he was a pretty devout religious man. Like, uh, and I think, again, that's interesting because you don't always hear about that, but it, it's kind of woven into his tale. Now, as we begin to close this out, I think it's worth mentioning that he actually, throughout his life, had deteriorating eyesight. And is his eyesight deteriorated? It didn't stop him. He actually ha had a very different um, take on it. His thing was like, well, there's like less to be distracted about now. <laughs> and instead of getting less prolific, he got more prolific. And with the help of scribes, he was able to put out a lot. There was like one year where he was pumping out articles just like every week. So I think that's kind of insane. Um, and he was a, uh, he had, what, 13 children with his wife, but only five survived childhood, which is unfortunate. Um, and he's, he and his, his wife were married for 40 years, and then she died, and he died three years later. But as they both perished, like, his legacy has gone on. And I think it is pretty cool that, like, him and his wife were married that long. Like, you know, I think it's pretty cool, 40 years. Both led pretty long lives. Um, that being said, uh, the one thing where he was being made fun of in the past, like, there was one more thing I wanted to mention with that because I found it, like, hysterical. Um, he was building something for Peter II, and he, Peter II didn't like his engineering skills, and I don't know, there was an issue with it. But one of the things that Peter said was, Vanity of vanities, vanity of geometry. <laughs> like, wait, what? That's ridiculous. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I don't want these videos to be too long, so I am going to bring it to a close. But, um, and I'll leave some links in the description that will give you some more information on Euler. Um, but yeah, as we close out, it's worth mentioning that, yeah, he wrote a lot. He impacted math as we know it throughout history and our understanding of a lot of different things. He had his vision deteriorate over time, and despite that, he just produced more work. And that is kind of crazy. And yeah, he did get into a lot of arguments with people, and that's fair. People do that. But however people might have felt about him and his religious beliefs and how he might have interacted with some people, his legacy still remains. And his life was an interesting one. And I don't think, 
I could I can include every single thing in here about that. Um, and I was trying to think if there was anything else that was major. Yeah, okay, so one of the things is, like, um, that I definitely think is worth mentioning is that he was, you know, a research mathematician, but, you know, he taught. And what's really interesting is at some point in his life, he tutored a German princess for a long time, and there was a lot of letters that they exchanged with one another, which were composed into a book later on in time where people have probably read that more than some of his works. Um, but I think it was like letters to a German princess and uh, that combined with what we know about his legacy would indicate that he was good at talking about math to people who didn't necessarily have that same academic background. And I think that's impressive because I do think that in order to like um, really stand out with math, you kind of have to like hit it from both sides, right? You have to be good at the competition, at the, fit, um, at the theories and all that good stuff. But I think you have to be able to talk about all that sort of stuff with everyone else. Because like I said in a lot of my other videos, I feel like we're all nat natural mathematicians and a lot of the things that we learn in class are meant to like take what we have, be able to like generalize and expand so that we can use those generalizations to say things about other things. In a better way of saying that is with math, it happens naturally. We do it naturally. And what we have and what we learn in school is supposed to refine that so that we can make predictions, so that we can talk about what's going on in the, in the here and now, so we can say something about the past, so we can communicate with each other in a different way, so we can talk about the universe. And with Euler, he contributed a lot to that. And I think that's pretty cool. And if he was doing all the math behind it and then able to talk to people about it, I think that's doubly cool. Teaching is important, you know? That being said, I think that's about all I'm going to say in this video. Euler did a lot. Now you know if you didn't know. <laughs> Professor Prime out.